Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Hope you're all doing good. We're gonna be doing a barn painting today. It's gonna be a winter landscape painting. I'm gonna go ahead and pop the colors up on the screen here. These are the colors I'll be using. And if you would like to know the brushes that I'll be using, I'll list them below in the description box. I am painting on a 20 by 16 inch canvas. I'm gonna take the quinacridone red and a little bit of white and a little bit of Indian yellow. You can use cadmium yellow if you have that, but I really like how warm Indian, Indian yellow is, so I'm gonna go ahead and use that today. So I'm gonna go ahead and just go kind of a fourth of the way down, and I'm gonna start blocking in the brightest part of the sky. And as I move up into the sky, it's gonna get cooler, so we're gonna have more purple and pink tones and blue tones instead of the warm red tones. So that's why I'm using two reds today. I've got the quinacridone red, which is cooler, and then the, or I'm sorry, the quinac quinacridone magenta, which is cooler, and then the quinacridone red, which is the one I'm using right now. So I'm using just a one inch flat brush and just keep applying that into the canvas. I'm just making a little bit more of a mixture. I'm gonna grab just a slight bit of the portrait pink. I started using Liqu Liquitex heavy body paints. Um, I wanted to experiment and try a different brand and I mean, I still use the Liquitex Basics, but I wanted the uh, heavy body paint. And I love these paints so much. They are so rich, like their colors are just so vibrant and beautiful. And I think that you'll really see that in this painting. So um, I absolutely love them and I'm probably gonna be using them for a while. So I, I'm just gonna go ahead and keep blending that in. taking a bit more of that quinacridone red. And I'm not gonna be picking up any yellow. So as I'm transitioning upward, I'm gonna be using less yellow. So not, not picking up yellow. Now I'm just taking more of that quinacridone red and that is just what I'm gonna stick with um, right as I blend this peach orangish kind of color in. in. So um, I'm just gonna go ahead and keep applying that. That quinacridone red is one of my favorite colors. I love it. It gives off such a vibrant hot pink color. It's just really pretty. So now I'm dipping into the ultramarine blue and with the quinacridone red. So now we're adding just a little bit more blue and it's gonna start eventually just kind of turning um, gradually into like a pinkish purple and then eventually the top will be, the majority will be blue. So just keep gradually mixing that blue in as you get up higher. The one thing that I do notice about these paints is they do tend to dry quicker, at least for me they do. So um, I do have to work pretty quickly, which is why I'm just kind of gradually blending as I go and move up on the canvas. So that way I can just seamlessly blend each color into another. And we will be putting a second layer of some clouds and things like that um, on this on this layer um, of paint. but. Uh, but I just wanna kinda of work quickly just to make sure that there's a good blend.
So now I'm grabbing some of that Prussian blue, which is the darker blue on my palette, and it's going to give it a really pretty dark bluish violet color. So I'm just going to keep mixing that in, and I'm going to apply that up to the top of the sky there and in this middle portion. If your paint is not staying wet enough for you, um, you can always just take a wet water bottle and squirt your palette or just continuously squirt the canvas um, just to keep it moist so that way, you know, your, your paints are um, blending in with each other well enough. So now I'm taking Prussian blue and a little bit of that ultramarine and I've got a nice, pretty, dark blue. So I'm putting that at the top of the sky. And I'm not gonna do the entire sky with it. I'm gonna just kind of apply that and I'm actually gonna here in a second grab a bigger brush because this one just isn't cutting it. So I'm gonna grab my um, two inch flat brush here and start uh, finishing the rest of the sky. <laughs> So now I'm picking up a little bit of that quinacridone magenta and quinacridone red and I'm mixing that into that blue color that we had um, just to kind of make it a little less blue and kind of more purple just a tad bit and I'm just going to go ahead and start filling in this chunk of the sky with it. I just wanted a lot of variation in color. So now that I've kind of got the first layer of the sky on here, um, I'm going to go ahead and uh, start mixing up a color for the distant trees. And I'm going to go ahead and use kind of like a darker brown color. And I like to just mix my brown when I do dis distant trees. So I'm going to take some red, blue, and yellow and um, I'm just gonna keep mixing until I get a, a good kind of somewhat warmer brown color. 
So if you know, you know, your color theory and what's opposite of what, <laughs> I just keep mixing until I get a, a good brown. So if I mix a little bit too much red, it's going to obviously um, be, you know, too red. So I'm going to go ahead and mix a little bit of blue and yellow. And then if, um, because green obviously is opposite of red. And so then, you know, um, if it's too violet, I'll mix a little bit of yellow to, to kind of neutralize that purple tone. So it's just, I just keep mixing until I get a good brown color. So I'm going to go ahead and with this, um, with this mop brush, I'm actually using a mop brush. I really like um, the effect that it gives me when I put in distant trees. Just really soft little um, details of some distant trees back there. Nothing too, nothing too detailed. I really like um, using that color theory for when I'm doing um, all kinds of different paintings. It really helps me because a lot of times I find that some people think that they need to dull a color down by either adding white or black, and that's just not the case. Um, I really like to, you know, take the opposite color of one that I'm trying to dull down and use that when I'm doing my landscapes and I just feel like it gives it so much more of a realistic look um, because sometimes I feel like if it's too colorful and I know that this is a colorful painting but I was going for that in this painting but sometimes I like to do more of like a natural um, you know natural palette and uh, just kind of focus more on like realism and so when I do that that's pretty much the theory that I use I just I take a lot of orange um, and I will dull that down with you know my blue to either you know mute the blue sky or the other way around um, you know it just all depends on whatever I'm painting but you know I just I really try to um, use less uh, black and less white to get you know my colors to the um, you know to the tone that I want so if you're if you're struggling with that I would definitely recommend trying that out and seeing if that helps helps you in your paintings so um, as you can see I just laid down um, a basic blue color I used a little bit of Prussian blue and white and I do have a little bit of violet still on that brush so um, from putting the sky in. So it was just a tad bit, not much, and I'm just laying that down. And I'm going to go ahead and put details over the top of it, but for now that's a good base layer. And um, Prussian blue is one of my favorite colors to use for different snow tones and like shadows on things. It's just a really nice color to work with. So. I'm laying that down in certain areas here. I'm gonna have a tree on the left side. So um, I'd like to have like a distant shadow of that tree. So now with a dry brush, I'm grabbing a dry brush cause I wanna scumble this on. So I want it to be dry brushing since I'm putting some clouds in grabbing just a little bit of that ultramarine blue and some of the red and I'm just making a pretty violet color. And I'm gonna be putting those on um, right in the upper part of the sky here, of the orange part of the sky. Thank you. 
So now I want another dry brush. So I've got a round brush and I'm taking quinacridone red, some white. And I'm gonna go ahead and take a little bit of that peach mixture that we had. And I'm just gonna start scumbling on some of the bright pink clouds right up in this dark, darker portion of the sky. Feel free to use whatever type of brush that you have, as long as it's a dry brush. Um, that will help you a lot more um, when you're putting on your clouds um, on another layer of paint. So I always like to scumble, so I always try to use a dry brush. Um, and it just so happens that I had a round brush available, so that's what I was using for this. And sometimes I'll switch off and I'll use a filbert brush. I really like to use filbert brushes for my clouds um, and round brushes. I'm gonna go ahead and take some of that pink color, mix it in with the purple color, and I'm gonna go ahead and just start um, wiping my brush back and forth, um, not putting too much detail um, in the top part of the sky here. And again, I am using a different brush. It's another, um, it's actually a filbert brush. Like I said, you can use whatever brush you have. I just like to keep my colors clean, so I'm just using another brush. So I'm gonna go ahead and pick up just a little tiny bit of the quinacridone red mixture just to brighten up some of this sky and this portion of the sky right here just a little bit. And I'll use that color to kind of come down in the middle part and brighten some areas up throughout the midsection of the sky. So I'm gonna go ahead and start mixing up um, another dark brown color for the distant trees. And I ended up grabbing a small angled brush, which is fine to use, um, you know, for the for the uh, 
the uh, distant trees and tree limbs and things like that. But to get these really far back trees, I'm going to actually um, end up picking up my small round brush because that will give me a lot better uh, thin lines. So I'm going to go ahead and use that and I'm just going to start popping them in where I'm going to place my barn at because I wanted to have the tree kind of coming through the cracks of the barn where the barn is actually broken. So um, I'm going to go ahead and be mindful of where I'm placing those. So with that same run, round brush, I'm taking, I'm actually going to put some raw umber on my palette, which is what I'm doing right now, um, because I'm going to actually take the raw umber and mix it with some of the blue tones. So there I've got a little bit of raw umber and I'm just mixing up somewhat of a, of a gray color. I've got some blue, yellow, white, and raw umber just to get kind of like a neutral gray tone um, as a base for the barn. So I'm going to go ahead and block that in and I actually am going to switch to back to my um, angled flat brush to, to really get some of those corners, um, you know, uh, those corners defined on the barn. Um, the angled flat brush is really, really nice for a lot of things and it's really nice for when you're putting in um, like edges of something and you need a sharp edge. Um, I use it for a bunch of different things, but that is uh, definitely helpful for placing in these houses and barns and things like that. So I'm just gonna go ahead and start mapping it out. And I'm just doing a very basic shape um, of a barn. Basically just a top is gonna be the triangle area. And then, you know, come down on your sides and then once I get that, uh, you know, down on the canvas, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and detail it out once things start to kind of dry. And you, like I said, you don't really need it too, too detailed because it is off into the distance. And another thing that I like about this angled brush is you can just pull it down. You don't have to do individual lines all the time. Um, I actually use my angled flat brush a lot of times for fur and for feathers. If you do it light enough and you have enough water thinned down with your paint, you can get some really nice thin lines. I know it sounds weird, but practice it because it, it really does help. So I like using my angled flat for all kinds of different things. So I'm just kind of pulling down and um, trying to incorporate some, like, a, you know, some little broken pieces in there. Like I said, I wanted to have the tree coming through. 
Um, so I wanted to have some open pieces of the barn up top where you can see the sunlight and the tree coming, coming through. Okay, so I'm taking my blue, red, and white, or blue, red, and yellow, and again, I'm just mixing up another dark color for a tree that I'm gonna put up kind of closer, right where I put that shadow in on the snow. So I'm just gonna go ahead and start implementing that, and don't get hung up in doing too many details, you know, with the tiny, tiny branches. Um, I kind of just take my brush, and you'll see I just kind of squiggle it around um, when I get to the really fine detail um, of the like tiny branches, just because if you do every <laughs> individual one, it's just not gonna look as realistic. You might think that it would, but when you're working with far distance objects like that, you really don't wanna detail it out too much. So I'm just putting the thicker parts of the tree in and then I will go through with a small round brush and kind of squiggle little uh, squiggly lines to make tiny little branches. So I'm taking more of that ultramarine blue and Prussian blue, slightly darker, and I'm gonna go ahead and reincorporate that shadow underneath that tree. I'm grabbing a medium brown brush. Any type of brush will work as long as it's somewhat smaller, not too big. And I'm using very little paint. And I'm just tapping in what are almost gonna look like little footprints in the sand, or not in the sand, sorry. I do so many seascapes that I'm getting confused um, in the snow. And I'm making sure to, uh, you know, try to make sure that these distant ones, these little shadows in the distance are not detailed. They're very, very um, kind of closer together and they're small. So try to focus on doing that. And then as you bring it up closer um, to the bottom of the canvas, obviously, which is gonna be closer to the viewer, um, you're going to be making your marks bigger. So push, push more into the canvas and spread out your uh, little footprints or whatever they might be, shadows or whatever, just little indications of, of some sort of detail in there. And then I just kind of tap my finger just because I like to have it a little blended and um, it helps make a little bit more marks. Um, so that will help with your um, distance in your paintings too, just always being mindful of that. And I'm kind of trying to like lay out where I'm gonna have, I'm gonna have like a little road here in the middle. So just on both sides of the snow, 
um, you know, of the little snowy path, just making those little details. So I'm going to take um, I'm going to take some white and some of that portrait pink. I had to grab a little bit more, but I I've got and I've got I'm back to my uh, bigger flat brush. So um, just a little bit of portrait pink. You don't want too much. You can always add more later, but I wanted to kind of not make it stark white, but just have a little bit of that sky color, just a tiny tiny bit. In the snow there so I'm just laying that down in place of where I'm gonna have my little path my little road be and um, obviously just kind of make sure that it's getting wider as it's coming closer to you and gradually it's getting um, you know smaller as it's moving away thinner as it's moving away so think like a big long triangle shape and, um, and that is gonna help give you some depth it's gonna make make it look more realistic so I'm just blocking that part of it in and then we will detail it out and make it not look so flat Let's see right now it looks kind of flat there's not a lot of stuff going on you can't really tell that there's snow but once we build up these details you'll be able to slowly see that it'll give you um, you know some indication that that it's a dirt path or, or you know a little a little road so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and start putting on some highlights up a little bit on the snow area around the area that you've kind of blocked in your shadows and little footprints and things like that so just try to kind of go around those areas and not cover them up my brush I'm gonna lightly tap some of that highlight color that we used the portrait pink and white and I'm just gonna kind of line the edges of the road this is what's gonna make it look like the snow is kind of deeper in the field and that's what's gonna make it not look so flat and then I'm gonna take that same color and I'm gonna go work around the area that we put in some distant um, like shadows in the snow, like some footprints and things like that that we put in, we're gonna actually take that sh that highlight color and we're gonna go around those areas um, just to kind of bring out the, the shadows and footprints and things like that. And it's just gonna add a little bit extra intre interest to the painting. Now, as you can see, I've grabbed my two inch flat brush. Um, I thought that this was gonna be a good brush to use as I was trying to mix up a good color for the um, little pieces of like grass and just, you know, foliage in the field coming up out of the snow, but it just wasn't working out so well. So I ended up just using my small angled flat brush, um, which worked much better. So, um, I ended up you know just switching that brush out and I did just grab a little bit of the raw umber to go ahead and do that foliage with and I'm taking just a tiny bit of blue to kind of gray it out just slightly and I'm gonna try to put some little um, little grassy areas around the tree there
So there you can see I've switched my brush out. <laughs> the, the bigger brush just wasn't doing the job. So um, I'm just taking a decent amount of paint, um, but not too much, and I'm just lifting up um, very lightly, light touches, I'm just lifting upward, and it, see how it just separates little, um, like little grassy things in the snow there? It, it, that brush, like I said, is so good for fur and things like that and grass, um, because it does, if you know, if you practice using it enough, you'll see what I mean when I say you can get, um, you know, those thin lines that you're looking for. So just try to practice it sometime and get the consistency of the paint good on your brush. And that's pretty much the most of it. You don't want to have too little or too much, um, because obviously it'll just come out in blobs. But see how you can get those thin lines and make sure again you're keeping the grassy areas longer up front and shorter farther away. So I'm taking um, a little bit brighter of a color um, than we had before as our highlight. Um, so I'm grabbing a little, just slightly more um, of the portrait pink and I even had a little bit of that quinacridone red, um, but very light, not dark at all. And I'm just trying to kind of take that color and pop it in like near the parts of the grass to make it look like there's snow kind of pushed up against areas and just to bring out some bright highlights in the snow where the, maybe the sun or you know the bright sky is hitting it. If you if you hear somebody shoveling stuff around <laughs> and my children laughing in the background and my baby making weird noises that's there's a lot going on. Um, my kids are all home for remote learning, as some of you are probably experiencing, and it's kind of a challenge to get everything done. So sometimes it's not always quiet here. So I apologize about the background noise. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do now is take my mop brush that I was using earlier and I'm gonna just take that brown color and start kind of blotting it on for some of like little parts of the branches um, on this tree. And just kind of give me a head start um, on getting those put in. And then I'm gonna go back through with my angled flat brush and kind of just squiggle little lines around as you'll see. And it's just gonna, it's gonna do you a lot better than sitting there trying to do each individual little branch. So. Um, just swirling them around and you know making little random marks on the tree is gonna make it look like there's a bunch of tiny itty bitty branches all clumped together.
So with the blue mixture, with the ultramarine blue, white, and the Prussian blue, I'm just gonna go ahead and add some snow onto the tree. So I'm going to go ahead and take that blue mixture of the snow and start putting it on top of the barn and I'm just going to start adding more details to the barn. So I'm going to be taking a smaller round brush to um, try to put in some areas of black, which is what I have black on my palette for, for the broken um, barn wood pieces. So I'm going to go ahead and just kind of put that in there in random spots as you'll see. And then I'm going to just be taking some uh, lighter versions of that gray color we have locked in and just kind of bringing out some highlights on the barn. So right here I'm just mixing up a purple color similar to the color we have up in the sky. And I'm just going to bring that down, but I'm using very, very um, small shapes in the sky, the very thin clouds, because I don't want to have um, big clouds down lower because that's going to help with the depth too. So here I'm just mixing up a lighter gray color, just a little lighter than what we had in the base of the barn, just for a nice highlight color. can be like a grayish green or a grayish blue, just anything kind of like that. So right now I have a lot of green, so I'm taking a little bit of pink and it just kind of mutes it down a little bit. So with my really s small um, round brush, I'm just kind of putting some, some little um, lines in on the barn going downward. And here I'm taking black and just putting it in between to kind of look like there's broken out pieces of the barn. So these can be just some like little windows in the barn that are kind of broken out.
So all, all I'm basically doing is just trying to bring out the little bit of detail in the barn because I put just a very rough base in for the barn in the beginning. So I'm just touching up edges and corners and things like that. Um, you don't have to be like really precise and follow mine exactly. You can have it be more broken up or you can have it so it's um, not broken and everything looks nice and in place. I just really like the look of old barns that are falling apart. Um, and so it just, and you, you can't really mess it up um, in your painting. So it actually like the, the messier, the better. It'll just look more broken. So, um, you know, don't, don't look too much into it when you're putting on these little details. The way that I like to work my texture up in the barn is from dark to light. So I just kind of gradually um, lay on a little more highlights here and there, which is just going to add a little more detail to it. So here you can see I'm just taking that black and I'm not going all the way up. I'm just going in little areas to make it look like there's just broken out pieces. And then I'm going to go on the um, left side of the barn. Here in a second and I'm gonna kind of come down at an angle so you can see kind of like the side just a little bit of the side of the barn so it looks like it's sitting at just a tiny bit of an angle
I've got some of that Prussian blue mixture on my brush and I'm just lightly tapping a little bit on the top of the roof and just a little on certain wood planks of the barn. I'm mixing up a little bit of that pink sky color and I'm going to reincorporate it in the barn area so that way you can see more of it shining through. Other than just putting in these little final highlights and things like that, just brightening things up, um, I am pretty much finished with this painting. So I hope that you guys learned something from it and enjoyed at least watching it. If you guys did follow the tutorial and want to share it with me, you can do so on my Instagram, which is Lucid Renditions Art. And I always enjoy seeing what people create. Just send me a quick message and let me know. Um, and of course, if you have any questions or anything like that, please feel free to leave them in the comments below or any future suggestions. I always appreciate feedback. Um, so anyhow, thank you so much for watching. And this is the final painting. Cute little barn. I'll probably do another winter scene soon. So until then, if you guys liked it, make sure to hit subscribe. And don't forget to hit that notification bell to be alerted of my upcoming videos.